Yeah, you're you're good. I okay. just, we're we're live now, and then okay. I just got to hit this intro. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. Uh, I started a little bit early today because I want to get through like the intro and and Char- John Charles's bio and everything like that, and then um, but people will start to come in the chat as as we're as we're going along here. Mm-hmm. But um, who I have with me today, uh, he really needs no introduction, but uh, I'm going to give him the, the the read his bio. It's John Charles Moyen. Um, he's the uh, French experiencer. Um, you've probably seen him at the Orlando, Orlando conference with Elena Danan and Danny Henderson, um, Brad Olson, all those people. Uh, he's his film is called Revelations of a Star Seed One and Two. Uh, just a little bit more about my guest, John Charles Moyen, started as a captain of a squad team of research and rescue in a 20 year back program aboard the Solaris and Solar Warden, which had a mix of both USA and French officers. He recalls working along with extraterrestrials and conducting missions as a super soldier in off-world ops in the Ultima Tactical Team Matricule 777 unit. John Charles will start off by sharing some of his early childhood experiences, which later groomed him for his role in the secret space program. John Charles is currently producing the documentaries South Shore 1 and 2 with Michael Sala, which he investigates two special agents and unsolved cases division dealing with UFOs and extraterrestrials and abductions. He also has been featured in the documentary Connection Alien, which documents his close contacts with third, fourth, and fifth kind, and Revelations of a Star Seed Parts 1 and 2, which documents eyewitness and scientific evidence of John Charles' experiences. John Charles currently resides in Quebec, Canada, and has over 30 years experience in Hollywood special effects. He's also an expert in martial arts, ninjutsu, and has been trained in the international close protection. Yeah, and his YouTube is channel is Connection Alien, and uh, his videos can be seen on Vimeo. That's Revelations of a Star Seed 1 and 2. And I'm really honored to have him on the show. Um, John Charles, thank you for coming on my show. How are you? Oh, very, very nice. Thank you uh, to receive me uh, tonight, my friend. It's very uh, honor to be in your, uh, your podcast. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, <laughs> biography. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, uh, how did this all uh, like take me from the beginning? Like, how did this all start for you? Like your extraterrestrial memories, if you don't mind. Oh, when I was a child, uh, it, it began when I was uh, with my parents at four. When I was in a in a holiday in a vacancy with my parents in uh, on the beach in uh, in France, and uh, all start at this moment because I was abducted in the front of my parents. I playing in the sand and uh, suddenly uh, I disappear in the front of my parents. So there was very panic and uh, they search everywhere and ask to a uh, lifeguard and the people, did you see a little boy and blah, blah, blah. And uh, he's during one hour and suddenly in the front of my parents, there was desperate. I reappear, really reappear at the same place. And nobody knows where I go, I, where I went at this moment. After that, I begin to develop a, a, a lot of abilities like uh, telekinesis, like uh, uh, telepathy, like a uh, heal. When I touch uh, someone like uh, animals or, or uh, humans, he heal uh, suddenly. So uh, after that, I have an interaction with electricity. And uh, during my childhood, um, I was um, interact with uh, energy, you know, like uh, example in the supermarket with my mom, I was in a alley and suddenly I was very tired and my mother tell me, oh, but you must sleep, but we can't sleep here. We are in the supermarket. So I close my hand and close my eyes and suddenly shut down in the supermarket, all supermarket shut down. And my, my mom tell me, John Charles, is it you? And I say, yes. And uh, light on, please, turn on. And at this moment, everything turned on. But there is a guy in Halle with a, a box of peas. He heard everything and he was traumatized. He was like this, frozen. And we go to the cashier and uh, 
at this moment i was a little boy so for me it's it's like a game you know i i'm i'm a, i'm a pure so you you say stop and you continue okay it's like all child and there is a lot of cashier one two three and in my line i was playing with the light open close open close and my my mom tell me john charles stop it it's not funny and the same guys in other line was traumatized and look oh my god we get out of the supermarket and it it was one of the the thing was my parents was a testimony of that in my documentary and there was a lot of thing after that after that i grew and this is the first contact i i had with the, another intelligence i was in my bedroom and uh, every night i heard something rummaging in my room so i i wasn't able to 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 see what's happening because at this moment like a lot of child i sleep on my stomach you know so i can't move because something power stick me to my to my uh, my bed so I heard a lot of singing in my room, so I was a little afraid on what's happening. It's not the cat because the cat sleep in my with my parents' bed. So the other day, I decide to sleep on my back, and for me, it's 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 logical because if something happening, I just open my eyes and and see what's happening. And this is the first time I saw him. It was a shadow, and. Uh, he move in a, it's it's like a humanoid shadow and i say i saw you and the shadow move at this moment he think maybe if i don't move he don't see me but i i say i saw you so he come to me and i have a little lamp in the, near my bed and uh, he, he, he come uh, uh, get out the, the shadow and i saw a, a big um, what six feet no hair green skin and red eyes and he sat at the bottom of my bed and tell me hello my name is victor i'm here to protect you and i say why are you here and he, he tell me oh i i not agree to stay in contact with you because uh, you are not able to see me so i don't understand why why you you see me and my frequency was very different after my abduction so this is a reason why i can have this perception to to to, to see him and i have a question a... john charles yes what, this this victor being was he would you say he was like a gray alien or what what kind of being or was he just like a a weird being that nobody's ever seen before or like oh what... no 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 uh, it, it's it's like a human but the the, the skin is different only it's not a reptilian okay it's very important to clarify it's not a reptilian he is a ultimian uh, from the planet ultima and uh, he, he is a it's it's not a, a being um, like uh, with a scale and, uh, no no just the skin was a uh, very uh, very um, soft and uh, only the difference was the skin was green and the eyes with all red okay it's impressed you know when you are a kid and you are 12 it's it's it's, it's impressed you you see that in your womb you can you can share this with uh, a lot of people because people think oh you're crazy or it's a dream no no it's not a dream so he, he, he tell me he don't have an agreement to stay in touch because the conglomerate don't agree that and he disappear in the front of me he, he, he teleports okay the next day he come back to my room and tell me i have the agreement to stay in touch with you from the conglomerate and i say why and he tell me because in the future in the very very future <laughs> one year after you have a lot of answer and you have a lot of questions sorry and i have the answer for you because your future is uh, very important and it disappears and we stay in touch a lot of time and uh, discuss between he, uh, between Victor and me uh, after that.
That's so interesting. And and did, did your did your experiences take off from this point, like in your life? Like what like would you say with like all the other extraterrestrials, or did this Victor guide you as as? And did he tell you you were maybe a hybrid or something like that? Oh, it was the only uh, at this moment. It was the only one I have in contact with Victor. After that, I meet a lot of beings, but at this moment, this is the only. Um, the only beings I met, but when I was four and I disappear in the, in in the, uh, in a bit on the beach, I remember when I was teleported into a big uh, spaceship. Everything was um, very bright, you know, with no bolt, no everything was like translucent, and there was a, a, a four beings. Uh, at the the different point, left, right, and bottom, and, and background, and there was like um, light beings, and they talk to me in the, in the telepathy, and tell me everything is fine, don't be afraid, everything is okay. And at this moment, I was a little afraid because there is a big a bay window with a space view, and at this time, I, I saw the the, the Earth. And uh, I say, oh my God, I don't see my parents. And I was crying and they calmed me and tell me everything is okay. Don't be afraid. After that, collapse. And I was on the beach. Okay. So the first time, this is these four beings, these four light beings, I was in contact. After that, the official contact with Victor happened when I was 12 in my bedroom. That's so interesting. And then when, when did you start realizing that like you you were you were in the seat when you had a, something involved in the secret space program? Like when did your memory start coming back for that? Uh, the next year at 13, I was in a, but when I was six years old, I spoke to my parents. I was in, uh, I sleep and uh, the, the, the morning I wake up and I say, oh, uh, tonight I was in a spaceship and blah, blah, blah. And my parents say, what? It's not a dream like every child, you know. Oh, I work with a lot of species. I am, I am six. And uh, I say, oh, it is a uniform and uh, uh, there is a kind with me. And uh, I play with other, ch other child in the, in the classroom. And uh, at this moment, at six, I explain the secret space program because I was in a spaceship. It's not a dream, you know? And when I was uh, young, it's very important to clarify. I do a dream, but not a dream. Uh, I tell dream, but you understand what I mean? Because yeah. it, it's like a vivid dream. And when I wake up, I have a stigma in, in my body. Like uh, if I dream I was in the Bahamas, and I'm wake up. I was stunned, and I was, I, there is a, a, a white sand between my toes in the bottom of my bed. So it's it's impossible. I am in a building in the ninth floor in a, in in Paris. Uh, there is a, no uh, sand around, and uh, I am in my bed. You know, and I was stunned. And my parent testimony of that it was insane. You know, you, you, imagine you met a dream and you bring back something in your dream. Yeah, that's amazing. So you've always had this ability to like teleport almost. Uh, at this moment, uh, uh, yes, I think it's a teleportation, but not consciously. It, it was uh, like a dream, but I wake up in my dream. And I remember I realize I dream. It's impossible. You, and I and I um, like I drive my dream, you know, OK, I dream. I, I have my pajamas. I have my T-shirt. I I bring the same thing when I sleep in my bed. So I realize, oh, do I dream or not? But I'm a child. I'm a kid. So I share this with my parents. And fortunately, my parents are open mind, uh, a lot of open mind. So they protect me. They don't share my, my story and my ability to protect me. So I can explain every day with my parents, oh, uh, uh, dad, mom, uh, I was here tonight and uh, I draw and my, my dad take a picture and uh, 
uh, either diaries and uh, everything was uh, classified in, in the diaries. So I remember that. That's so interesting. We have a, a question from the chat. Um, Soldier's Voice for Life says, John Charles, can you recall some of the beings you've encountered and describe what they look like? Any with wings did you ever have specifically? The wings. Yeah. Like, like she said, did you, can you describe some of the beings you've encountered and did any of them have wings? Uh, no, no, not wings, not wings. I, I only remember an uh, emblem with a uh, horse wing. But Wait, this well. is uh, the, the, the sequel of my, of my story, but not beings with a, uh, with a, uh, with a uh, wings. This is a, uh, this is a question, right? Yeah. No, or, no, no, she, said, she said, are there any of the other beings you've encountered too? Like, or, and, and did you have any other with wings? No, 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 not wing, but uh, with uh, branchy, uh, like uh, fish beings, like uh, aquatic beings, uh, uh, like uh, reptilian beings with different color, green, red, black, uh, black draco and uh, green draco and uh, uh, hybrid, like, um, like um, cat people, feline people. And uh, I remember uh, a gray, but mixed gray with a spot like a leopard, you know? So one thing I, I heard wing. you say, one thing I heard you say on, on another podcast, I thought this was so important is um, that you, 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 uh, you, you were on a ship, you were on Solaris, right? And, exactly. um, and there was another guy from France that kind of verified your story. You said he's come out with a book and you yes. came out with a video and, and it kind of came out at the same time. And you guys found out that your stories kind of verified each other. Is that correct? Yes, correct. I, I can explain because if people don't understand, uh, this is the, the second part. Okay. At 12, I, I met Victor in my room and he told me, you are a big uh, life with the special things and uh, all done. The next year at 13, I was in a summer camp and this is the beginning. I have a big, a huge sunstroke in my head and I was evacuated to an emergency, to a hospital and uh, my pain was very, very, very hard. So they decide, it's, it's very rare, you know, to, 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 to make me an X-ray because my headache was very, very strong. And they discovered, the first time they, they, they made the X-ray, they discovered something wrong in my brain and they decide to make another X-ray because they think at this moment there is a dust on the x-ray but it was not a dust it was uh, a, like a tic tac metallic tic tac like implant and they decide to keep me in a room uh, to observe observe me and during a few days and i remember in the night the the x-ray doctor came into my room with another guy a military guys and i remember sometimes i I collapse and sometimes I was wake up because I was dehydrated and I was something in my arm with a glucose and sugar and, a, you know, to, to heal me. And uh, I try to understand what they say about me. He show my, my radio. So it's not, it's not normal. Uh, like uh, I'm a civil, you know, like a uh, uh, military guy is, is in my room. And I try to understand, but I can't because the military guys spoken in German. So now, that makes me think, was it, was, were they, the, were they, was that like the, the Nazis or do you think that was like Nordics or have you kind of put together who that was? No, I don't know. At this moment, I, I say, I know there is a, a, a lot of agreement with the French and the German uh, at this moment. Maybe this is a military guy and he spoke German and maybe it's, uh, I don't know at this moment, but the sequel is very important. I was collapsed and I was wake up by a military guy with a white hair and a blue eyes. And he wake up me and he tell me, hurry up. We go now. I don't want to miss the jump. And at this moment, I say, what do you say? What is the jump? And I follow these guys because at this moment, I think I'm thinking that it's a, a, a they transfer me in other department because I have an injury in my head. So I follow the, these guys and we go to a, a, a big corridor and we arrive in the, in, the, 
in the elevator. We go into the elevator and there is a, a um, military guy with a black suit and a, a red triangle emblem in the chest with the black glasses. And we go down, go down, go down. And at, at this moment, I feel that it's not normal. We go down deeply. It's not uh, uh, ordinary, you know? So I was very stressed. And when I'm stressed, the light on and light off. And the military guys put her hand in my shoulder and tell me, everything is okay. Don't be afraid. Everything is good. And we arrive in a big anger in the, in the basement. They open the doors and there is a lot of children in a line, girl and boy. And he tell me, everything is, is finished for me. It's over for me. Go to this table. And I was inside of me. I, I feel a, a, a powerful, like uh, everything is, is okay. Don't be afraid. I arrive in the table and there is a, a woman. She tell me, put your hand in this little box. And I put my hand, it, it's like a signature, like a DNA. And I feel a, 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 a warm, a, a, a hot in my hand, like a scanner. And she give me a suit, a black suit with a emblem, a silver emblem, horse wing, like a Pegasus. And she tell me, go to this light in the, in the line, in the lineup. I go to the lineup and I was uh, sucked by the light and I feel a tingling in my, in my body, my turn head. And when I opened my eyes, I was in no other big and huge anger. And he, there is a military guys and the, and the doctor with a white suit. And they tell me, uh, they test the fear with a lot of uh, children and many failed, but not me. And he, 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 he tell me, come. And he spoke to the, to the German, but in French. And he say, this is the boy I told you. And he tell me, go to this room. I go to this room. And in this room, there is a, a shadow room. And there is something very huge inside this shadow room. And get out the shadow. And it was a big mantid, a big, big mantis. And she come to me with a big eyes. I was uh, impressed, you know, and she put a big paw in my shoulder and tell me te telepathically, everything is okay. Don't be afraid. You have been chosen. And I collapse and I wake up in my bed in, 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 a, in a bedroom of the hospital. And I say, oh my God, what's happening? And after that, I collapse again. And when I opened my eyes, I was wake up by a big horn, the bus horn, and I was sat into the bus with my bag. I don't remember how I get out the hospital. So it's weird, you know? So I go to the summer camp and I explain to my little friend what's happening. And they mock me and uh, you are crazy and blah, blah, blah. It was very sad for me. I was destroyed inside. and. I cry a lot and I decide in this night to get through the window and go to a, a, a field with a mountain and I was sitting on the ground and I look up the sky and I say, I don't want to be here anymore. Come and get me. And at this moment, there is a, a little point in the sky like a stars moving and it transforms into a disc. And I was teleported into this disc. And there is Victor with another being. And he tell me, welcome aboard the Solaris. And my ECSP begin at this moment. Wow, that's amazing. And then do you do you have like vivid memories of like, 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 for example, like I know it says in your bio that you worked in the ultimate tactical team matrix 777 unit. Um, yes, yes, like, yes. Was was this for like what we would call like the French uh, SSP? And, and is, is it like mixed with USA officers as well? Yes, yes, it's a mix of the Solaris is a part of Solar Warden. It's a branch and it's mixed like French and, and, uh, and USA work together with another beings 
to patrol in the universe to protect the solar system. So at this moment, uh, when I was in the, in the spaceship and uh, welcome aboard the Solaris, there is a blonde woman with the big blue eyes and a blonde. She came to me and tell me, hello, my name is Maria, but everything, every people call me Mary, follow me. And I follow this woman. She was amazing, beautiful, perfect face, perfect body, and uh, like an angel, you know? And I follow her. And we enter in the classroom. And in the classroom, there is a lot of children, but not human children. It was only hybrid and extraterrestrial. And Maria tell me, there is, you are only the Earth child here, but except one. There is an empty place. Go to this place. And this guy, was, her name was David Rousseau. And David Rousseau, have the same experience like me, but at this moment, we don't know each other. And you write a book with every detail I say now, and I make a movie with every detail. And somebody connect us. And at this moment, he tell me, did you did you read my book? Uh, not yet, because it's not released. Okay, I, I want to read my book. And did you see my movie? Not yet, because it's not released. And at the same moment, we discovered we have the same memory, the same classroom, the same, the Solaris name of the spaceship. Everything uh, was corroborate. It's it's insane, because it's the first time that two persons don't know each other have the same experience and the same detail. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Like, so, um, do you, would, would, would you say they did a 20 and back on you? Like, would you, do they age regress you? Is that what happened with the Solaris? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the first part was the classroom with the training with a child during my uh, teenage age. And after my training in the classroom with uh, David, we were replaced in the tube and regression age in the timeline and they put me in in my body and the body of david and after that arise her memory but for me i remember serving in in the space force and i tell to my parents and some friend i live something very strange and i describe I don't remember that in a few uh, in a few years or in a few months. I tell everything when during my childhood until now. All my memory at ninety two percent was here, and I live really this with a lot of uh, lot of uh, testimony witness uh, because in my life after. I had a lot of problem with uh, Men in Black and uh, uh, directed energy weapon against me. And uh, it's not in my brain or, 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 or memory. It's a real happening with a lot of witness around me. Yeah. It, it, and, and you said you had problems with the Men in Black. Were they, did they kind of like sock you a lot? Or like, and do you think they knew that your memories were coming back? Yes, I, I, I guess they know my memory coming back and um, because my story was uh, unique and uh, I had a proof, they, they, want, they want to work for them and I don't want to work for them at this moment in my, in my life. So, you know, the, 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 the word is, um, if you are not with me, you are against me. So maybe uh, they don't, uh, uh, they don't, Unhappy, as uh, unhappy that I refuse to work for them. Yeah. Now, um, I wanted. To, I see Elena Denans in the chat. I'm so happy. Like, hi, Elena. It's it's good to see that someone she's in the chat. And uh, um, so and, and a bunch of other people. I noticed uh, uh, soldiers, voice for life, and dots. Everybody's in the chat. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Helen is in the chat, uh, and. Uh, I, I wanted to go over this with you. Um, seeing Elena in the chat made me realize that you were at that conference in Orlando. Can you talk about your experience at the conference and um, what it meant for you to be around all those people and how was your experience speaking in front of all those people? Oh my God, it was uh, one of the best moments of my life because it was the first time 
I spoke uh, in the front of uh, of people in really physically and 1000 people is very impressed you know and I'm French so I do my best in English so imagine for the first time of your life you explain your in team um life uh, in the front of english people i must translate at the same time what i say to 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 make uh, attention each word in the, and i was uh, very emotional because i realized when i was on a stage oh what happened yeah. So, um, we, so well, sorry. What I was going to say was, so it was a good event then. So you, oh, you had yes. a good uh, amazing, amazing. I, I, uh, the people uh, spray love and uh, very positive. And uh, at this moment, uh, there is a portal opening in this conference because every people was uh, wow. I met a lot of people with a big arts, and uh, it's a pure love, my friend, and. Uh, I think something happening during this conference. Each speaker was amazing. And uh, we are a family. The bond and the link between us was very strong and is very strong. And the best is yet to come. I, I agree. You know, I interviewed a couple other people who went to that conference and they said that I, I, I the one girl said that she got uh, major downloads, like major psychic downloads from going to that conference. Like, so a lot of things, I think a lot of people kind of got activated by going to that conference. Oh, yes, I guess. I guess we um, I guess because um, there is a, a very strong energy during this conference. So I think uh, something happen in a lot of uh, people's mind, you know, and uh, some um, some memory rise and uh, some déjà vu, you know. There is a lot of things, like me and Tony, it was the first time I met Tony physically. And when I saw him, I was, uh, oh my God, I know, I'm sure I know, I know him. You know why I'm at now? Because uh, we, we have a contact uh, since we are uh, a boy. So it's very hard to explain in, in a few minutes because my life is very, um, uh, you, I have a many experience. So I do my best for the people know me, it's okay. For the people don't know me, it's very hard to, to, uh, to uh, understand what I say because I must uh, concentrate, you know, focus for, uh, so I take this, I take this and I, I do my best. So sorry for the people that un don't understand my, my story. No, no, it's, it's okay. Um, I wanted to ask you, I, that's what I want to get into a little bit about your story. Now you worked with Dr. Michael Sawa on the uh, documentary South Shore Origin one and two. Before we get into revelations of a star seed, can you talk about your documentary South Shore Origin one and two that you made with Dr. Sawa? Yes, um, there is a few years before uh, I would like to explain my life and uh, some people uh, are my friend at this moment, but not now. And uh, they advise me to do uh, something uh, like uh, X-File because it's the best, uh, the, the time is not come to explain your life, but uh, it wasn't the, the reason because at this moment they don't want uh, to disclose my So. I listen, but uh, I make a movie with 85% uh, real about my life and uh, the rest was uh, fiction. But uh, you understand, it's, it, you can make a message into the, the, the movie and the people can understand what I say in a movie. So, and uh, I began this movie, it's like an X-File with Mulder and Scully and uh, we have two agents with my wife and uh, we, we uh, investigate about abduction, but it, it's my, my story, uh, romance, but it's my story. And the, the, the Thoucher one finished uh, like a crossover, so I, I must make a sequel. I am in the sequel now, I, I finished uh, half. And the sequel, uh, the first, the first movie, I sent the first movie, and I dedicate to my friend Michael Sala, and uh, he, he say to me, "Oh my God, it's a good movie." And I say, "Can I ask you something?" He tell me, "Go on, go ahead." And I say, "I, I, I want you in my new movie." So he tell me, "Oh, it's a big honor, John Charles. I, I accept." And 
Michael have um, uh, a role in in my new movie, and uh, I, I don't want to 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 tell what because it's a surprise. But it's um, the sequel of my movie about extraterrestrial and uh, about reptilian, and uh, it, it's a, it's a it's a story with mixed with fiction. Okay, it's important to clarify because it's not all real. After that, I decide, and I say, okay, it's enough. I don't want to uh, to be uh, manipulated by people. I want to tell my story. And my wife Melanie, my dear wife, my angel, my 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 whole, <laughs> tell me do the right thing, honey, and do the truth. And I decide to shooting Revelation Starseed One and Revelation Starseed Two with all one two hundred percent real. Everything is real inside. So it's important for people because people say, okay, Soulshore is a sequel of Revelation. No, 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 no. Soulshore is a Soulshore and Revelation Starseed is a Revelation Starseed. It's very important. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because in Revelations with Starseed, you get into the whole reality of your story, correct? Exactly. The first part was uh, like, uh, okay, uh, who I am and blah, blah, blah. And people love it. And tell me, you are an extraordinary life, so you must have extraordinary evidence. During a lot of years, a lot of decades, I had this evidence, but I was not wasn't sure to how to share this. And I spoke to my friend Michael, my friend Elena, and my friend Danny. And okay, and I decided to talk to my parents. 80 now they live together, and I say. Could you testimony for me? This is the best uh, thing. And she tell me, okay, son, we accept too. And it was the best, the best day of my life. Can you imagine, my friend? My two parents accept uh, with uh, not uh, with uh, in the light, you know, in the light, uh, in the spotlight. They decide to testimony everything I I say now. And I decide to make my movie Revelation Starseed 2 with two hours and 35 minutes with all witnesses. They know me during uh, 35 years, during 45 years, during uh, when I was born. And a scientific friend like uh, Dan Winter and Chris Esson to um, explain in scientist what's happening to me so it's a big part it's a, it's a, the best documentary uh with the, in in the world it's it, it, it's a good word because because it never happen in, in with a witness with a, a say evidence with physically and uh, so people must see this uh, must watch my my documentary because everything is inside with a proof and uh, after that you you think what you want, but all is real. All is real. I have a question for you. Um, I know you mentioned your wife. Is your wife an experiencer as well? And is she yeah. uh, very psychic, like how you're psychic? Yes, she's experiencer too. But uh, now I can explain because she wants to explain in the, in the, in the future. In the, a few months, she she decided to learn English very quick to because she don't. Speak Spoke English. She don't speak English, so a little. But she want to learn English fast to explain what they live in since uh, she was child. So we yes, there is a lot of uh, connection between uh, her his, his life and my life, and we work together in the SSP program together too. That's so cool. Now, um, you talked about Dan Winter and the evidence. Can you? I don't want to give away too much of your film, but can you get into that a little bit, like what he talks about with like the scientific evidence? Yes, uh, Dan Winter is an uh, amazing, uh, amazing person. He worked since a lot of years uh, into the brain wave, and uh, he created a software with another scientist and a programmer uh, about. Uh, cartography the um brain wave like uh, gamma and uh, alpha and beta and blah, blah, and a lot of brain wave and he tell me if you have a um, explanation scientist uh, 
do you want to uh, test uh, your abilities? And I say, oh, yes, I, uh, 100% yes, I, I am trusting you. So we decide to, to put, um, um, I don't remember the name, a device in my, in my, uh, my head and record uh, something uh, about my abilities. And for the test, I test, it was, it was, it was crazy, okay? Um, I tried to reproduce uh, um, the, te the, not the telekinesis, the, the teleportation when I was young. And uh, at this moment, something happened in my brain and everything is right in the software. And when they analyze, Dan and her, her assistant analyze the, the brainwave. He see he, he tell me he don't he, he never seen that never before. He, it's out of the charts. The brainwave was insane. I don't move and I'm trying to teleport myself really physically. Okay. And uh, nothing happened real here, but I say, okay. He, Maybe it don't work. No, no, no. The software, like a seismograph, record everything into the, the, the brainwave software. And this is a proof of something happening very strong because you don't move and you out of the charts. They must reduce the screen to see the, the, the my brainwave because it was... Uh, very m not very strong it's what huge strong and he he, he traveled in a few uh, country to test a lot of abilities of uh, children um they have the abilities to to read a book without her eyes with blind and uh, there is a, a big uh, strong brain wave and he tell me you are more stronger than i ever seen in my life so everything is uh, in the, the documentary too so people can discover uh, this uh, amazing evidence that's it that is amazing evidence that, that it, then have you always had these psychic abilities or like when did they when did you notice that they turned on was it during your secret space program years or like um what would you say uh I, I i had this uh, this uh, abilities uh, since i was a child because when I was a child in the school, I, I was, uh, can you explain? I have a time to explain? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was in exam in uh, primary school and uh, suddenly I want to go to the toilet. So I raise my hand and nobody uh, answer me. And uh, every, every, everybody was frozen. So I decide to go to the toilet and I enter to the toilet. We are in the two or three uh, floor and there is no windows. I close the door. There is a lot of uh, just a wall, you know, and um, I was in the toilet and suddenly I feel something inside me like uh, a tingling and shut off the, the light off. And when I search the button, I open the light. I was in the toilet, but not the toilet of the school. I was in a few kilometers of the school in the toilet of the apartment of my parents. Every stuff, every uh, clothes, everything, every my stuff was stay in the table. And the people say, where is Dunshaw? And they uh, call uh, the, the guardian of the school, the locker smith. They open the door, close inside. Nobody was in inside the toilet. And I was in the toilet of my parents. So I was really physically teleport. That's amazing. That's so amazing. That that really is. And 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 I, I was just gonna say that almost connects to like how you were talking about your dreams to where you said you'll wake up and you'll have a dream about the Bahamas and you'll have kind of like sand in your feet. So it seems like you've always maybe had this ability to kind of teleport. Oh yeah, I uh, now I'm sure I was teleport. You know what? Uh, I remember my 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 mom telling me that um, in a night she wake up and go to the toilet and uh, like uh, a lot of mothers she check our uh, uh, children uh, sleep she opened the door and my bed was empty 
and I wasn't in my bed. I wasn't in the toilet. I wasn't in her apartment. And she go to bed. And I say to my mom, you don't shake a lot? No. Uh, something inside tell me uh, everything is okay. Go to sleep. But she remember I wasn't in my bed. So where I am? I am in the, in the ninth floor of the apartment. Everything is closed. There is a, the kitchen. There is a bedroom. There is a bathroom. And uh, nobody... You, you can hidden something. So I was really disappeared. That's amazing. And then do you, but do you, did your parents have a bit, what were your parents experiencers as well? Like, you know, they say it goes in like family lines. Did you, did you, did they have par paranormal experiences at all or anything like that? I know not, not really, but I discover something very strange uh, because uh, uh, all my experiences don't share with my family because my my family don't believe that, and uh, uh, some somebody in my uh, in my family want to uh, go to the psychiatric hospital and uh, imagine. So we don't share. But something very strange. When I uh, move to Canada, there is a uh, twenty uh, twenty years. Uh, I have a, a dinner with my uh, grandfather and uh, I decide because I think at this moment, this is the, the last time I saw him. So I decide to explain everything. He don't know. He don't know nothing about me. Okay. So I say, grandpa, I must to talk. And he say, okay, what? And I say everything I tell you. Imagine everything. And I ask to him, did you leave something very strange in you in your life and he tell me when he was young he was near to death he was very sick and was in a hospital like a monastery and uh, it was very very uh, very young and uh, he tell me there is a going into room a, a priest because they they think at this moment my grandpa was will be dead so uh okay <laughs> <laughs> and in the night, he remember he was uh, in the in the bed, and in the roof in the um, in the roof there is a a disc a multicolor disc turn very speed, and he lose consciousness, and the next day he was totally ill. Nobody understand what's happening. Wow, that's amazing. Oh uh, yes, yes. So yes, he yes. so he was an experiencer as well. Yes, I think there is a in the family. Um, there is something follow uh, in the, in the family, and my parents, uh, my my mother, my mom feel uh, the energy and is protect uh, a lot of times in uh, in the danger, and and my dad too, but don't have a contact really contact. They f they feel the 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 presence of of Victor, like my mother saw victor once in her life and she remember for the rest of her life she was alone i was in the school my parent my my dad was on on her job and she was alone and uh, she was crunching on the ground and uh, look something and there is in the front of uh, her a big pendulum with a uh, you know with a uh, with metal like talk, talk, like a britain uh, pendulum and uh, she feel at this moment there is something behind me and she turned and nobody yeah you know this everybody have in our life something oh is my shoulder and there is nobody and each time she turned nobody and she decide to to do that and raise her hand like that and she saw clearly in the reflection of the pendulum victor behind her like this wow and she was afraid and say okay victor i want to turn don't be afraid me i want to turn i'm crazy i'm crazy i'm turned uh, she turned and nobody but she remember i have a shilling she remember she saw the reflection of victor in the in in the pendulum so imagine <laughs> you, you can explain that in the family dinner you know <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I was going to say, so who is Victor then? Do you think he's like a protector of your family? And is he like someone connected to you over long, like uh, throughout multiple lifetimes? Like, are, are, are you a hybrid? Sorry, that's a lot of questions, but I, I'm so interested in this whole Victor aspect. It's so interesting. 
Victor is more than a protector. He's a, a part of my family because my DNA is a very um, different. And uh, I don't share now because I want to share in, in another, uh, in my own some movie. But what I tell you is um, I'm the same family of Victor because it's very important i try to 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 give some information but every information is linked with another information and it, it it's very it's very hard to to choose uh, some part okay uh in the moment of my life hang on in the moment of my life my friend uh i bleed of my nose like uh, a lot of uh, children but my bleed wasn't red it was green oh wow and my mother can testify in my documentary because uh, there is a lot of spot in my pillow, you know. So uh, when I have an injury, uh, the, the 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 blood wasn't uh, green. So we can go to the doctor and say, "Oh, my my son uh, bleed, uh, okay, but it wasn't uh, red; uh, it was green." So oh, in in the forty-five or. Uh, or 48 uh, years ago, uh, imagine you go to the laboratory and uh, they cut in little, a little piece in the bottle. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think that means you're a hybrid, or, or, or and are you going to explore that more? I I don't know, but it was just a part of my life because after that everything was okay and my my blood wasn't uh, green. It, it was it was um, it was red again, but. I breed, I don't know, but that I know my abilities was was real. Was real. Yeah. Uh, I, I cross a road with my uh, walkman in my head, in my in my heels, and my dad tell me, uh, be careful when you cross the, the, the street because you, you don't hear the, uh, a, a car. And it's happening. I cross and I don't see, I don't saw the car. And the car um, kicked me, and I, I had nothing. The guys get out of the car. Oh, my God, oh, my God, are you okay? Are you okay? And the car was break until the the motor, you know? So the insurance, it, the guys was very crazy. And I escape, and I go, and I run. And, and I go to my house and explain to my to my father. And my father, it, it was near my apartment, so to the balcony, he saw the 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 the, the car. It was uh, like a, a a big car, you know. So he was he, he takes um, the glasses and say, "Oh my God, the car is break, but I have no thing, no no injury to me, and uh, maybe I was a force. Maybe yes, I was a force field at this moment. Protect me." That's amazing. It's, it's, you've had such amazing experiences. I don't have any other questions. Um, I, I just, if you could tell everybody, I want to thank you for, first of all, thank you so much for doing this. We've been almost going about an hour. And uh, if you could tell everybody where to find you, where to find your documentaries. And this has been amazing. Thank you so much. No, oh, thank you too. Um, everybody can uh, find my information to, to uh, my web channel, uh, Connection Alien, uh, to YouTube. Connection Alien. And uh, in Connection Alien, there is a link to uh, Vimeo. There is my my movie uh, documentary, uh, South Shore 1 and uh, Revelation Star Seed 1 and 2 is on Vimeo. Okay? So they can find me in, in my web channel, in a uh, YouTube channel is the best because there is a lot of description about me. I had a um, a 15 capsule about my life free capsule you can you can uh, find all information uh, is this in french or in english dubbing so we have all information about my life so um thank you uh, very much robert the times pass very quick <laughs> yeah and, and until next time we'll do it again and thank you, everybody, everybody, for coming. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Remember to go to um, John Charles' channel. Check all that out. And thank you. Thank you all for your support. We, we appreciate it. And thank you.